When the Spurs drafted Victor Wembanyama, we knew they were getting an exciting prospect, but I don't think any of us knew just how generational Vic was going to be. We've seen a lot of number one picks be labeled as generational prospects or the best prospects since LeBron, and they didn't necessarily live up to the hype. However, with Wemby, I don't see how he could have done more as a rookie to actually prove himself. Obviously, he put up great numbers in his rookie year, but it was really those final 45 games of the year where he just really solidified himself in the league, really proved to everyone why he was worthy of not only being a number one pick, but being labeled as a generational prospect, one of the best prospects we've ever seen. In those final 45 games, he averaged 23 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, and just under 4 blocks. These are numbers that, when we look at them, we'd expect to see that from an NBA legend, someone who's just firmly established themselves in the league, someone who's one of the best players in the world, not a 19-year-old rookie who's just getting his first taste of NBA basketball. So even though he's extremely young, Wemby is clearly very talented, and with just how well his rookie season goes, if he improves upon that in his second year, after that second season concludes, who knows where we're going to view him. He could clearly be a top 10 player in the world by that point. And if Wemby is in conversations as a top 10 player and you factor in the other youth that the Spurs have, some of the veterans that they brought in this offseason, I can understand why many people have the Spurs rising up the standings, possibly making the play-in or potentially even making the playoffs. The thing with the Spurs though is that they're understandably one of those very exciting teams. And so I think as fans, it's easy for us to get super far ahead of ourselves. And, and we want to just project the best possible result for this team when in actuality, that best possible result may be very unrealistic. I do really like this Spurs roster, but I feel that this year is just going to be another year of growth for them, which to me is fine because a lot of people are talking about how they should make a big trade. They have to win now. They have to take advantage of one beat's early years. But with the amount of picks that they have, the amount of young talent they have that they're still developing, I don't see why taking a slow approach is a bad thing because I think the Spurs could build a really, really good team that way. Obviously, we know how great Wemby is on both ends of the floor. He's the Spurs franchise player. But San Antonio has another young star in Devin Vassell. This is a guy who's improved each year of his career, and I like that he's someone who's capable of playing on the ball, but he's also great at playing off the ball too. When he has the ball in his hands, he can get to the rim. He's not a crazy athlete, but he does have a lot of length, and that allows him to just finish around defenders and really hit tough, contorted shots at the rim. Then he's someone who can play in the pick and roll. He has a good mid-range shot, so if he's coming off the screen, he can pull up for shots in the mid-range. He will have to improve as a pull-up three-point shooter, but he has shown potential in that area, and a good sign is that he's a very good catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying with his off-ball ability. He's someone who can get out in transition and be a threat on the three-point line. Then in the half court, he's someone you have to account for in spot-up situations. When you have a guy like Wemby who's just so talented, commands so much respect and commands so much attention from the defense, it's great to have guys around him that are threats off the ball. And Vassell is someone who, as I said, can knock down catch and shoot threes and can also cut to the basket and finish at the rim. He also showed improvements as a passer this year. And while I don't think that he's someone who should be a lead ball handler, someone who should be the best passer on your team. He's someone who's capable of being a secondary playmaker and someone who, when he has the ball in his hands, you're not just thinking, oh, he's going to be shoot first all the time. He's someone who can play an effective two-man game with Wemby because yes, he can create his own shot and get good looks for himself out of those actions. But he also showed last season that he's able to set up Wemby and get him easier looks. The Spurs also have their rookie, Stefan Castle. I don't think he's going to be able to make a huge impact right away, but I think down the line, He's someone that the Spurs should be really excited about. He's a big guard who just has tons of defensive potential. Right now, that's probably seen as his best trait coming into the NBA. He's just very physical, very aggressive defender. And if his defense translates to the NBA and he's able to be a really effective defender, imagine going up against Stefan Castle as a point of attack defender. And then if you're able to get by him, you have Wemby waiting at the rim and he's probably already the best rim protector in the league. The big thing with Castle is how he's going to develop on the offensive side of the ball. When he was at UConn, he played in a system that was just really predicated on ball movement, sharing the ball, everyone getting touches, nobody really dominating the ball and controlling the offense. So yeah, he didn't get to fully showcase his skills in college. And when he said before the draft that he viewed himself as a point guard, that that's the position he viewed himself playing going forward, there were some people who kind of raised an eyebrow at that. Stefan Castle definitely has point guard skills, but I can see why people would have concerns about him. The clear point of improvement for Castle is going to be his jump shot. 
He didn't shoot a great percentage in college, but I think the thing that's concerning people is just the hesitancy he has to shoot at times. There were moments where defenses would just sag off him in college and you could tell that he was kind of questioning what he should do. He was kind of overthinking the game. And it's one thing to be a bad shooter, but it's a whole nother thing if you just don't have confidence in your shot and you second guess yourself. Especially, yeah, if you want to be a lead guard and you view yourself as a point guard, you're going to be handling the ball a lot, initiating the offense. And in today's NBA, guards are expected to not only do that, but also be threats as scorers and put pressure on the defense. I do like Castle as a prospect though. He has lots of defensive potential as I said. The jumper will take some time but it does look good. I think he'll be able to figure that out. And then he showed potential as a pick and roll ball handler in college. And the Spurs just signed Chris Paul, one of the best pick and roll players in NBA history. Signing veterans is so important for the development of a young team. And Chris Paul is not only experienced, he's also an amazing basketball player. He just has so much knowledge and skill that he can pass down to guys like Stefan Castle, Devin Vassell, Trey Jones. Even with guys that don't play the same position as him, he can just teach them so many things about how to prepare off the court, how to prepare your mental for big games, how to perform in really big games. He just has so much knowledge to pass on to these young guys and I think he'll do so many good things for the Spurs. The Spurs also brought in Harrison Barnes this summer and he's just a player who's experienced so much in his NBA career. He was a lottery pick by the Warriors and although he never got to become a star with that team, he was a key player on that championship team. He was a good starter, good role player, so he has that championship experience and actually played valuable minutes. He eventually went on to leave Golden State and go to Dallas to get a larger role. And even though he had some seasons averaging 18 or 19 points per game, the team just wasn't successful. They weren't making the playoffs, so he went to Sacramento in a reduced role. And although they weren't good at first, he eventually helped them get back to the playoffs. So this is a guy who's played multiple roles throughout his career. He's played for championship level teams, playoff teams, teams that weren't making the playoffs. I think he'll be very valuable for guys like Trey Jones, Keldon Johnson, Zach Collins, Jeremy Sohan guys who don't necessarily have the potential of Devin Vassell or Victor Wembanyama, but they still have the capabilities to be contributors on a good team, and I think Harrison Barnes can just help them figure out how to best play their role. Speaking of those guys, it's going to be interesting just to see how they develop this year, but also how they gel with their teammates. Trey Jones, is he someone who can be a starting level point guard or is he more of a really good backup? Can he coexist with Stefan Castle in a backcourt playing next to Devin Vassell or Wemby? Those are questions I have about him. Then there's Keldon Johnson who's shown potential as a scorer, but given that San Antonio has Devin Vassell, they have Victor Wembanyama, they don't necessarily need scoring. They need guys who can, yeah, do all the little things, play defense, be really good passers, play within a team concept. Keldon Johnson is someone who's still improving as an all around player. He's also someone who you'd like to see improve their three-point shot. He's definitely not bad, but going forward, San Antonio is going to want to surround Vassell and Wemby with good three-point shooters and not just respectable ones like Keldon Johnson is. Jeremy Sohan, though, is someone who is a really bad three-point shooter. He has those all-around skills that maybe Keldon Johnson lacks. Sohan is a good defender, and for his size, he can handle and pass the ball fairly well. The Spurs did try to use him at point guard, though, last season, and that just didn't exactly work out and we just saw that even though he may have some point guard skills you can't necessarily turn a player like that into a full-time point guard the plus minus numbers weren't too good when Sohan shared the floor with Wemby or Devin Vassell and that may concern some people but I think that those numbers are a little bit skewed because as I said the Spurs were doing a lot of experimental lineups last season so I don't think that those numbers accurately depict how Sohan fits with those players I think the Spurs starting lineup on day one will be Chris Paul, Devin Vassell, Harrison Barnes, Jeremy Sohan, and Wemby. That's a good lineup right there and I think Sohan will benefit playing next to four good players at all times. He won't have as much responsibility, he won't be asked to do as much, and we can kind of get a clear idea of how he fits playing next to good players because yeah the Spurs were playing a lot of experimental lineups last year wasn't exactly a good fit for him and so the team struggled as a result. There's also Zach Collins who began last season starting next to Wemby. But as we saw how good Wemby was at the 5, they moved Zach Collins to the bench and just started Wemby full time at the 5. And it kind of makes you wonder going forward, how valuable is Zach Collins on this team? Right now, Wemby's minutes are a little limited because he's still adjusting to the NBA, improving his conditioning. But in the future, he's a guy who you want to probably be playing 33, 34 minutes a night. And if Zach Collins can't really play next to him, you only have maybe 13, 14 minutes available for him in that case. 
It makes you wonder if he's someone that's worth re-signing. He's making just under 17 million this year. He'll make 18 million next season. And if he's someone that's not too effective playing next to Wemby and he can only really fill in for him when he's out of the game, it makes you think that maybe the Spurs should just invest in a guy like Charles Bassey, someone who would probably command less money, would be happy playing 12 to 15 minutes a night, whereas Zach Collins may want more minutes. There are things I like about Zach Collins. I think he's a pretty good passer for his position. There's potential for big to big actions with him and Wemby. The Spurs just drafted Stefan Castle, who's a point guard, but is also a good off ball player, good cutter, so there's potential there as well. It's going to be interesting to see how Zach Collins fits into this rotation and see if San Antonio invests in him long term. So, yeah, I think this year's Spurs team is much better than last year's Spurs team. I like the additions of Chris Paul, Harrison Barnes, two veterans that are just going to make life easier for the young guys on the floor, but I think they're also two guys who just as I touched on earlier, have so much experience, so much knowledge, have seen so many things in the NBA. Then you have two young stars in Devin Vassell and Wemby. I think there's a very good chance Wemby will be an all-star next year. He's probably going to put up crazy numbers, probably like 25 points, 11 rebounds. He'll still get his defensive stats, probably a steal, three to four blocks a game. We all know he's going to have a great year, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't still have things to improve on. There were times last year where I just didn't really love his shot selection. His passing is good for his age, but there are still times where he'll telegraph passes. His IQ just isn't always the best handling the ball. Sometimes it feels like he tries to do too much. So I think just understanding the game, just learning how to get to his spots better, learning what moves he can get to that are really efficient and easy. As great as he will be next season, I think there's still going to be some growing pains for Wemby next season. And you couple that with the fact that there are still young guys on this team who are figuring out their role, figuring out how they fit in with the other players on this team. I think it would be too bold to lock in San Antonio as a playoff team, especially given how good the West is, and also given the fact that they were experimental last year with a lot of their lineups. They may do the same thing this season, even though everybody's saying that they need to win now, they need to make Wemby happy. I don't think the Spurs are in any rush to win. I think they're being really patient. They have a lot of draft picks going forward, including their own. And next year's draft is supposed to be really good. Yes, of course you want to improve from season to season, but I don't think the Spurs are looking at this year and saying, if we don't get an eighth seed, this is a disappointing year for us. They'll try to be competitive and win more games, but Wemby's minutes still won't be too high probably. I could also still see them doing some experimental lineups. And a guy like Chris Paul, who will definitely have an impact on winning, is bound to miss at least 20 to 25 games this year. So with all that being said, I have the Spurs finishing 12th in the West this year. That would be a good improvement over last year, but they'd still have a good pick for next year's draft. They also have the Hawks pick, which is worth mentioning, and then some other picks that have some protections on them. But, but in all likelihood, the Spurs are going to have two lottery picks in a really good draft. So I think that the focus this year should just be on improving, answering questions about your team, and knowing that you have the potential to add a lot more young talent in the 2025 draft. Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. With all that being said, I'm out, and I'll see you in the next video.